welcome back. This is your man, Warrior, and I had one of my patrons named Raven give me a video idea. Actually, all my patrons have given me a ton of video ideas, and I'm I'm starting to get a little bit of time to dig through some of them and come up with some ideas uh, that they've given me and, and make them videos. But Raven said, hey, man, I'd like to know what the most defensible team was, and I knew this ship was coming, so I didn't make the video when he had suggested it because I wanted to wait for the Chimera. Yes, the Chimera is the best offensive and defensive capital ship, but what I'm about to teach you today actually has nothing to do with capital ships um, it has to do with the most defensible team and there's a couple of MVP ships that you need to know about that are a match made in heaven uh, the first one and I think everybody knows and so we're not going to go over it a ton is all the way down halfway down the first order tie fighter the first order tie fighter on any team is great because he can double tap on his basic and he, he uh, applies target lock uh, on his basic so with this he'll deal physical damage with a 45% chance to attack again and each one has a 55% chance to inflict that target lock for two turns so he's a target locking fool uh, his damage on his basic is good and he can do it up to two times and then also he has what's called strafe and strafe is very cool because it's a special ability that has a large cooldown of three however as long as they're target locked this just resets you can use it every single turn and my current strafe is doing 80,000 to 100,000 damage which is like ship destruction it's really really massive damage um so it'll deal you know the physical damage to an enemy and then of course if their target locked strafe's cooldown is just completely refreshed so very very cool he also has this uh, relentless pursuit which says first order tie fighter gains 16 and a half percent turn meter whenever a target locked enemy is damaged by an attack now if you have him in a target locked team everybody's target locked and everybody's taking damage all the time and so this guy just becomes faster and faster and faster and faster and so this guy is definitely an mvp the other one is a new a relatively new ship that was just made farmable recently and so a lot of people don't have the tie reaper and they don't know why they would even want to farm it and it is farmable i've been farming it now since it became farmable and i've got it to five stars the first four stars are pretty easy after that it gets really difficult uh, because you know 65 85 and 100 is just really hard when you're getting one to three shards a day but you need the death trooper and the shore trooper even if you only have them at three stars you can still gear them up i am working on shore trooper getting him to gear 12 a lot of people ask you know who should i get to gear 12 well every piece of gear you put in not only helps the actual character with the stats you see on the left like a thousand health strength physical damage things like that but it actually boosts their galactic power we all know that you see the little green number go up when they have that added every time your galactic power goes up it triggers more stats and this is kind of a, something hidden you don't see it and let's go ahead and look at the ship at first and the stats and we'll look at the health is 60,779 and 147 speed. So 147 speed and 60K. Let's go ahead and go back to Shore Trooper. I finally got this piece crafted. And let's go ahead and upgrade him to gear 12. And now let's go back to the ship. And his is now 61,000 on his health and 147 speed. So you can see the increase of the stats in the ship due to the leveling of the gear. So that's what I'm kind of talking about. As you level up the gear, every few pieces that you add, you get more health, you get more speed, things like that. The higher the, the pilots go, the faster and better the ships become because it's directly correlated. They're bringing in, you know, 40% of the, the ship stats. So make sure that you're gearing up your characters. It's important. Every single piece of gear matters. But back to the ship at hand, this is really what the video is about. I know the most defensible team, but Ty Reaper uh, under either Grand Moff Tarkin or under the Chimera, either one is going to be an MVP or you can just run it in a target lock team. He does not have to be ran actually with any particular so if you're as long as you're building a target lock team the tie reaper is going to be your mvp now we're going to go through his abilities uh but I, I want you to do a comparison of all the other ships that are out there and i'm going to help you do that the first thing you're going to notice is death trooper brings in an ability just like what he has in arena for regular arena which is basically he throws his bomb and he either dispels or if they didn't have buffs and he didn't dispel he does 
cooldown increase. It's exactly the same way. It's called heavy interference and it will deal physical damage to the target enemy and it's going to dispel all the buffs on them. So this is a dispel. This is just like uh, you got with Umbara and as long as they're target locked or you know you've got with Darth Vader. Uh, so with uh, dispellers or Ahsoka, People know you need dispellers. You don't want to get caught up in a tank because if you get caught up in someone's tank, then they potentially their damage dealers might take out some of your ships. And so this is really, really important. And a lot of people run the Umbaran Starfighter specifically because on a target lock team, they know everyone's target locked and the Umbaran will just dispel on his basic. And he's tanky, right? So uh, remember tankiness, we'll go over that in a second, but he does dispel. Well, this heavy interference directly replaces that ability, which is why I suggest pulling Umbaran out out of your fleet and putting the tie reaper when he's ready into your fleet so he's going to give you another dispel now what's really cool is if they don't have any buffs to dispel he is going to increase their cooldowns and remove turn meter and the turn meter and the increase of cooldowns cannot be resisted. It also says if this attack removes turn meter, which means that they didn't have buffs and he wasn't dispelled, it says it's then going to also deal additional damage, 1% for all turn meter. So 40% turn meter reduction and 40% more damage. So increased cooldowns, 40% more damage, really, really great, and removing turn meter, and that's going to slow that ship down. You're more than likely going to need his his dispel so excellent ship heavy interference is equally as good as darth vader's dispel equally as good as ahsoka's dispel and of course darth vader makes sense in a target lock team because he has a target lock that can't be resisted as well as a dispel and so this is just another dispeller because everybody likes to have a couple dispellers if possible so the tie reaper and a target ally are going to get defense up you know 20 percent for two turns and protection up 20 percent for two turns if the allies empire and i'm running for empire now they're going to receive an additional 20 percent protection up so 40 percent protection up so you definitely want to use this with other empire not only do you want to have a team composition of empire but you also want to make sure that you're targeting empire characters specifically uh, and there's not that many in the game so shore trooper brings durability and that is what he brings with his ability so this is really nice it has a cooldown of three uh, which is not bad you get to use it once maybe twice in a battle so defensive battery is their basic. It will deal physical damage to a target enemy and inflict offense down for one turn if that enemy has no debuff. So as long as they're not debuffed, they're gonna get offense down. If they're debuffed, they're already in trouble. It's just gonna deal that physical damage. These effects cannot be resisted by rebels. There are a few more rebels running around. You've got now Biston, who's very popular. Cassian's ship is now farmable and is becoming more and more popular. So, but this is just going to, you know, if they're not debuffed, give them offense down. It kind of neuters their offensive capability so that is a really really good basic attack now all of this is great with the dispel and the protection up and the turn meter reduction on on his special and you know it sounds great but why would this ship the tie reaper truly be an mvp let's go and find out grim voyage now i know a lot of people know grim voyage is grim voyage they've read it and they go okay cool it takes 35 percent turn meter away from you know the capital ship whatever it sounds decent but i'm not sure how this is an mvp act well what a lot of people don't realize and or they just it hasn't connected the dot is this is says the enemy capital ship so it always targets your opponent their capital ship they lose 35 percent turn meter which is by the way very significant whenever any a-N-Y, any, <laughs> any, that doesn't matter who. There's 10 ships on the board and you got four backups, three or four backups. The opponent has three or four backups. You're talking about potentially 18 ships, you know, up to 18 ships. Whenever any of those 18 ships on my side, their side, any side, doesn't matter what side, any ship is defeated. The opponent slows down, their capital ship slows down. So if I start losing ships, it slows them down. <laughs> their capital ship down if they start losing ships it slows their capital ship down this is probably one of if not the singular best unique ability in on any ship in the entire game in my opinion it's the singular best ability in the entire game for a ship so this is a real mvp now a lot of people want to know is the tie reaper is is it are they you know is it uh a usable at three stars and and yes the ship itself is usable at three stars and above i've been using the tie reaper at three stars and above and i've been number one every day on my ship shard so yeah, absolutely 
there is a contingency and that is that you a have both characters and b that you have both characters geared up and i mean you don't have to have them like me gear 11 and 12 it depends it's relative on the shard you're on but obviously the higher you're gearing the faster and more health this ship has when we look at basic stats for this ship the first thing you'll notice is health and protection at with where i have it even at just five stars is 90,000 health and protection that is not bad at all that is very durable and i still am missing a couple of stars and speed is 147 but keep in mind this ship does not need to be very fast it's there really you just need to protect it so that way it can continue to eliminate the turn meter from your opponent's ship that is why it's so good on offense and defense it just slows the opponent down regardless uh, so and the first ship when you're going against a, a team with tie reaper is to kill their tie reaper and the reason for that is their tie reaper will do the very same thing to your capital ship benefiting them every time any ship dies so uh the, you know the rest of the ship stats are basic it doesn't do a ton of damage again this ship is basically a utility ship designed specifically to eliminate the opponent's turn meter both the their ships and their uh capital ship but also increase protection and defense on your empire ships real mvp and the ability to dispel so what i want to do is take the tie reaper into a battle show you how this ship works so by the way side note the reason why i say this is the most defensible team the one i'm using is because i get bumped maybe once a day um i wake up i'm either in third fourth or fifth place and that's it that's all i'm ever in it and you'll see that i'm also going against very overpowered teams you can see chew on it is using basically my my exact team i don't know what his backup is but you'll see that he's using the same style of team and then skywalker 5 is using the rebels which is really good for me if i was to go against it because those rebels um you know that offense down can't be resisted with the tie reaper and then uh Michigan is using Graham off Tarkin, which is not a bad ship and kind of the traditional target lock team with the Umbaran in there. And again, I would highly suggest the Umbaran be switched out. Well, the toughest team will be the team I have. So let's go ahead and go against Chew on it, who's in the number two slot. Now it really depends on your RNG because if your target lock's landing, you win. If your target lock doesn't land for whatever reason, because it just happens that way, you will lose. Uh, these ships, these, these arena ships that I'm going against, these teams, these team compositions are crazy overpowered and you have to be very scientific when you win. So I'm running the Chimera like he is. I'm running the exact same top five. Biggs is still the best taunting tank in, in the game, of course, uh, for ships. Uh, the tie advanced of course because of the dispel and target lock the tie reaper for protection regeneration the dispel and the turn meter removal and then first order tie pilot and the tie the the imperial tie fighter the imperial tie fighter because he's empire so you want him in the initial five lineup he's one of the few empire that you have uh for the protection up which is cool um also he's evasive and he does target lock 70 percent of the time and then of course you've got first order tie pilot who's the other mvp my, my two mvps in the back and first order tie pilot can just chew through opponent ships extremely fast and then of course i have uh boba fett who's able to come in with slave one and do some aoe damage and then i also am using the gauntlet and the reason for that is gauntlet can also cleanse your team so he kind of brings a little bit of like the akbar capital ship to an empire team which is really great and that's a great ship as well and then of course i'm using two rebels as well i'm using bistan first and then cassian second uh, because bistan has the stealth capability and stays all around a little bit long enough for casting to come in and for them the two of them to have synergy together so this is actually the team i recommend as the number one most defensible team it is the composition that i have had the best luck with i like i said do maybe one ship battle a day so we are going to go ahead and battle it out all right so like I said, the first thing you want to do is take out and destroy their TIE Reaper. Now the problem is he also is running the First Order TIE Fighter, which is a very, very bad weapon that can just chew through one of our ships exceptionally fast. We're going to go ahead and go with the TIE Reaper. We're going to do a basic, get target locked down. Now we're going to use my First Order TIE Pilot Strafe, okay? This is amazing. Bam! 62,000 and we don't even have offense up or anything that was critically important that we do that now let's go ahead and put target lock down 
And I have a dispel, so we're gonna go ahead and use it, which was off the Tie Reaper. Didn't matter, unfortunately, because they have such a target lock heavy team. They got their taunt back up, but it was worth the attempt. And that was the point. So we're gonna go ahead and with the Chimera, you can buff your ships and debuff the opponent's ships, which we're going to do now. This basically neuters the amount of damage that their ship is capable, their ships are capable of doing. Super important because they have three attackers out right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the special. This is gonna do a lot of damage and it's gonna put buff immunity up. And he's using Gauntlet in his background, just like me. Look at that damage First Order did. Just amazing. Now we can move to their First Order. Dodged. Nice. We're going to go ahead and put protection up on my First Order, or my uh, Imperial TIE Fighter. And we're going to bring in... Hmm. Let's not bring anyone in yet. Let's go ahead and do this damage. Pretty good. Let's do a basic... Didn't get the double tap, but we got rid of his first order. That's really the most damaging ship they have. We're going to go ahead and take care of their TIE Advanced, because I want to cleanse, but I can't cleanse until their TIE Advanced is gone. Ouch. All right, let's bring in Boba Fett. Strafe, and he's gone. Now we're going to move to the Star, uh, the Gauntlet Starfighter. Puff, buff immunity, constantly trying to cleanse and stuff. We're going to move over here and we're going to do his AoE. It may or may not hit both, but we're going to try anyway. Very good. And to finish off the TIE Fighter Pilot, I'm actually going to use his basic and select mm, the First Order TIE Pilot because he shoots potentially twice. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and finish off the gauntlet. And we're going to go ahead and debuff their Umbaran. That was the second debuff attempt. Now let's go ahead and target lock. Strafe, which is reset because we always use it on a target locked character. And we are going to go ahead and this is his strategic dominance. This is an instant kill and then does 40% damage to all the other ships. So this should be the victory shot right here. And we are going to go ahead and get Boba Fett back up to health and protection, which he got. So there you go. I was running basically against the exact team that I run against, except for my backup looks a little bit different than his backup. But you can see that just very, very good team. It can chew through. You can click it on full auto and just zip right through. Um, just note that if you don't get your target locks, you will lose, and if you get your target locks, you will win. Uh, but the TIE Reaper is totally MVP, and so is the First Order TIE Pilot. If you're not farming either one of those, you should. And good news for the First Order TIE Pilot and the ship. It is the login of the day starting tomorrow in November, so everybody will be getting this character and this ship in daily login. Super exciting. As always, keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.